So, Tim, I know you've done a mock draft. We're going to start uh, out with a couple of trades. Uh, what's a mock draft without some trades? So you have the <laughs> Browns trading uh, picks 54 and 206 to the Washington, Washington Commanders for picks 67 and 100. And then you have the Browns also trading Greg Newsom to the Cardinals for pick 90. So the Browns end up with 67, 85, 90, and 100. All right, let's go through them. Picks uh, 67, you have the Browns taking Malachi Corley, wide receiver, Western Kentucky. What do you like about Corley? I think he's a different body type, you know, than what the Browns have, a different play style than what the Browns have. They don't really have that guy who can get those yards after the catch. And I think Corley, you know, is a guy who's stuck stuck out to me, as I wrote, you know, just for some reason, ever since the Jerry Judy trade, Corley is a guy I can't get out of my mind as a guy that would fit the Browns because he, he has such a different style than everybody they have. You know, there's a lot of comparisons to Debo Samuel. I think that that's more in play style, I think, than ceiling. If if he somehow is in the Debo stratosphere, this is a this is a home run pick. But when I say the Debo style, I mean he's a guy you just get the ball in his hands any way you can, and he has enough open field ability. He's bigger than most corners, about 200, 210, 215. He can you know make people miss, and any guy who can take a two yard completion and turn it to eight to ten yards, you know that's so massive in the NFL. Anytime you get extra yards. In the passing game, you know, if you can make that first guy miss and make the other uh, defenders have to come over and tackle you, that just really makes offense easier if you have guys that can generate those plays. So that's why I keep looking at, you know, Corley is an interesting piece. Maybe he needs a little time to learn nuance, kind of like Cedric Tillman did. But unlike Tillman, I think Corley is a guy you can put out there and, you know, for lack of a better term, gimmick situations. The at 85, then you have the Browns taking defensive tackle from LSU, Mason Smith. What do you like about Smith? Well, I got to give my colleague Ashley Bastock some credit on this one. Ever she wrote about him way back at the combine, and you know, the more I thought about it, especially with you know the Browns bringing back you know the veteran defensive tackles that they did, you know, Maurice Hurst, Shelby Harris, you know because they still have Dalvin Tomlinson, Siaki Ika, you know, you can afford to take a defensive tackle who in my mind, you know, like most defensive tackles probably needs a year to redshirt. I'm of the opinion that any defensive tackle you draft basically needs a year before you can really put them out there in certain situations. And I think Smith's a very, you know, Smith's a, a player who I think that could be worth an investment. Six five three zero six was a former five-star prospect. LSU's lined him up on the edge and in the interior because of that's the kind of athlete he's been. Tore his ACL in 2022, but came back in 2023, had solid numbers. This is kind of a projection type of player. But again, you know, when you have so much veteran depth in front of him, considering, you know, the defensive tackle position, like I said, has a higher learning curve than most other positions. This is not a bad po position or player to take, you know, a little bit of a project on. You know, it's it's like with receivers. You know, you keep swinging until you find the guy, and hopefully in two years, if you're if you draft them, they could turn into something. I mean, look what look what happened to Jordan Elliott, you know, in his final year. It took a couple of years, but the Browns got you know solid defensive tackle play out of him in his in his final year for his rookie year. All right. The uh, other two at 90, Audric Estime running back from Notre Dame, and then at pick 100, uh, Roger Rosengarten, offensive tackle from Washington. Take us through uh, those two, what you like about them. It's been pretty clear. Estime is my, one of my guys, you know, one of my absolute favorite players in this entire draft class. I've talked about him a bunch before. You know, he ran a 4 7 one at the combine. That didn't bother me, you know, because speed's not his game. And I know he improved it at his pro day the other day, just ran a 4 5 8, so that's much better. I think with Estime, you know, there's a, when I think of Estime, I think a lot of David Montgomery, you know, a guy who's not necessarily going to have a lot of breakaway runs, but he's going to get chunk yards. You know, he's going to be tough for the first guy to bring down. He's more elusive than you would think for a guy of his size, you know, at, five, at a 5'11", 221 pounds. You know, I mentioned, I think it was like 20, 22 runs or so that, of 15 plus yards. And that's a tremendous number in college. You know, when you look at a stat that translates from college to the pros, explosive run rate is there. And Estime, as I've said before, he you knows measures similarly in that category to how Nick Chubb did in Georgia. I don't know if he, he's probably not going to be as good as Nick Chubb, but if you're looking for a power comp component of a tandem backfield, SMA is that guy. And especially if you're looking for kind of a hammer back to put in goal line situations to replace Kareem Hunt, I think SMA is your guy. And then going to 100, Roger Rosengarten, it's, it goes back to my number one, one of my number one draft rules is no matter how good your offensive line is, I don't care if you have the greatest offensive line in the world, 
you draft one every single season because, you know, especially with the Browns, we saw they were on their fourth and fifth tackles last season. And James Hudson's in the last year of his rookie contract. So you want to develop another swing tackle or a potential starting option. Rosengarten, you know, started the last two seasons at Washington, very good pass protector and, and playing the right, he played the right tackle at Washington, which considering they had a lefty quarterback in Michael Penix Jr. He has experience being a blindside protector in case, you know, he moves over to the left side. But he's a guy that probably needs to get a little stronger. But, again, considering who the Browns have in front of him at offensive tackle where you're still trying to figure out who your two stars are going to be out of three guys, you can really let Rosengarten develop behind the scenes with new offensive line coach Andy Dickerson grow and maybe in 2025 – you either, either, you know, if Jedrick Wills and Jack Conklin, for example, both leave or whatever, or, you know, you still have two of those three guys, Rosengarten can really slide in and be kind of a swing tackle, potentially an emergency starting option.